Michael Swickard here. Welcome to Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili, brought to you from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico, the chili capital of the world. The Fresh Chili Company podcast, we're looking for podness, podcast podness. To be a podner, just share what you're listening to, to your friends and family. You be a podna. There's an interesting story on KOB TV News. It's written by Brianna Wilson. The headline is New Mexico's green chili harvest season begins early due to high temperatures. It's news to people in New Mexico, especially those who are accustomed to harvesting and then fire roasting their yearly supply of green chili about the third week of August. The harvest is several weeks early, and it said the reason is it's very hot. Now, this is a joke. Don't take it as gospel. The weather in New Mexico is so hot. How hot is it? The weather is so hot, the chili being picked in the Hatch Valley chili fields is already, it's coming already roasted. All right. Not really, but it feels like it. In some ways, there is a positive since what stops the harvest of chili in the Hatch Valley is when the first frost hits, which seems a long, long ways off when it's triple digits and even the local horn toads are carrying canteens of water. Yes, another joke. One of the varieties of green chili being harvested today is sandia, which has got a hot heat and very rich chili flavor. And on the other end of the harvest, we're also at the end of the sweet onions, which have been fabulous this year. More about the sweet onions a little later. New Mexico has a number of towns with, how shall I say, unusual names. Today, let's look at Carrizozo, New Mexico. It is the county seat of Lincoln County. It's about 60 miles north of Alamogordo, if you're trying to place it. It's not in the mountains with Rio Do, so it's down on the plains. It's a place I personally have lived for a number of years. I was the swimming pool manager three different years, and uh, later I owned the weekly newspaper there for three years. That was the Lincoln County News. But what an odd name with Zozo at the end. I bet you can't find that anywhere else in the United States. The grass in the area is Carrizo grass. It's a kind of reedy grass that's very good feed for cattle. Someone at some point, they thought it sounded good, added an extra Zo to the name because it sounded good and indicated there was plenty of Carrizo grass. That's how they got Carrizozo. The inhabitants know it as Zozo. Uh, I'm living in Zozo. Of course, one of the most recognizable features in the Carrizozo area is the volcano to the northwest. It has about 40 miles of lava that flowed down past the town. Didn't quite touch the town, but went down the valley there. There is the Valley of the Fire State Park, which is fun to visit. How many volcanoes are there in New Mexico? Twelve. Some large, some not so large. Some within the last 6,000 years or so, like the Carrizozo volcano, and some like Sierra Blanca that are 28 million years old. So it doesn't look like Sierra Blanca is going up anytime soon. 21 U.S. states have volcanoes, 29 do not. The state with the most volcano, I bet you probably have figured it out, it's Alaska, 102 volcanoes. Six states each only have one volcano. Now, Carrizozo was a railroad town. It was noted uh, as a railroad town starting in 1899. Did a lot of cattle and sheep and that sort of thing. It was agriculture kind of a sleepy little town now focused on art and that sort of thing. Several movies have been shot in the area and the residents have been trained to be extras in movies. Have you ever tried to do that? See, they have to walk and act like they're talking, but number one, they don't look at the camera or make any sounds. And, and that that is what being an extra is. And so cares also the whole town is an extra for some of the movies, like the movie Wander. And there's work painting buildings for the movies and then painting them back. 
there's now art galleries and cafes. And, of course, there's a lot of stuff going on this summer. The Last Escape of Billy the Kid pageant and Old Lincoln Days, 30 miles to the east of Carrizozo. That's fun for Friday, August 4th through Sunday, August 6th, and Historic Lincoln, New Mexico. Again, lots of fun. The cool mountains of Lincoln County and lots and lots of tourist stuff to do. This pageant has been going on since the 1940s, and famous painter Peter Hurd was the first person in that Lincoln uh, pageant to actually play Billy the Kid. Now, when you think of New Mexico, do you think of ducks? Most people are not in the habit of thinking of ducks. Well, they weren't until a newspaper uh, editor... Uh, Harold Coslin and several others in Deming came up with the Great American Duck Race. This is the 44th annual Great American Duck Race. It's going to be Thursday, August 24th through Sunday, August 27th. Put that on your calendar. It's the trademark of the town of Deming these these days. What can I say other than, again, kind of fun, got cool vibes and fast ducks on display. If you've never seen ducks race, they are kind of interesting. I'll do more on the duck races in another podcast. Also in August, festival news, Alamogordo, August 4th, there's the Roadrunner Emporium New York Avenue Street Festival with DJ Magic of New Orleans. I've been told it is always a lot of fun. I'm actually from Alamogordo, but have never gone to it. I may have to consider it. Now, Red River's 8th. 1,750 foot three day barbecue and music festival is August 17th to the 19th. That's a lot of fun to be. And uh, Saturday, August 26th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Los Alamos at their nature center is the Bear Festival. Bear like Smoky Bear, not any other. Lots of fun. Michael Swickert here with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company. Hit uh, subscribe if you'd like to automatically get these podcasts. Fishing's good in New Mexico. Now, some of the lakes and streams, we were talking about this before, they are considered a special trout water. The, they, sometimes they call that quality waters. And so you could, there's certain restrictions, only artificial flies and lures single barbless hooks there's uh how many you can have and uh, the restrictions like that out-of-state anglers and there is a bunch of them must purchase annual fishing license one day license or five day license the license is good april 1st to march 31st of the next year now a fishing license is not required if you are 11 years of age and younger You can get these licenses at the New Mexico Game and Fish website. If you're 70 uh, years of age or older, that's me, your fishing license is free. Now, if you have fish for dinner that you caught and you use some fresh chili company products to, how will I say, enhance the flavor a little bit, take a picture. Post it and the recipe on the Fresh Chili Company Facebook page. You can be famous. When... uh, People talk about fun things to do in New Mexico. One of the things I like to mention is the Sandia Peak Tramway in Albuquerque. It is 2.7 miles in length, the longest tram in the Americas, and it has taken over 12 million passengers in its 50-some-odd years of service. The tram is attached to, to cables so that the weight of one tram going up helps pull the other tram going down and vice versa. There's a restaurant at the top and also hiking trails in the summer and a connection to the Sandia ski area in the winter. I have been up there dozens upon dozens of times. I'm telling you, that is a great trip. Now, it took two years to construct 1964 to the opening in May of 1966. The tower in the middle could only be constructed with the service from helicopters since they couldn't construct a road to where the base is. So they helicoptered people in. They had about 5,000 trips with helicopters, so it was not an easy thing to do. That tram is so much fun. Now, there's a road to the crest up there where you see the uh, television radio towers. It's uh, that 
Crest Spot is about a mile north of the Tram Cafe, so you can drive up to the Crest. You can walk around, walk back across to the restaurant and all that stuff, or you can just ride the Tram. One thing is for sure, all chili peppers are not the same. We've learned that, and it is something we really like. Some have less taste heat than others. Some have more taste heat. Some are a little more sweet. Well, the same is true with onions, and New Mexico State University is one of two universities that really research the different varieties of onions and onion breeding and dealing with onion disease and stuff like that. They do so for taste, the ability to resist a disease, and the stuff that's tied to growing and harvesting the onions. So there's a term we use, sweet onions. Those are onions that are not as strong, not as pungent as other onions. Here in our area, and for sale at the Fresh Chili Company, are sweet onions that are also used in the development of chili and onion sauces that we have. Have you tried the combination? Well, I have. It's really great to be put on mashed potatoes or on steaks I'm grilling. Other uses of sweet onions I haven't gotten to yet, but I will. About 10% of the onions grown in our area are sweet in nature, meaning that they're not as strong, as, which is what some people want, people like me. New Mex Sweet is the holding name for several varieties of these high productivity, low pungency, and disease tolerant onions. New Mexico State University researchers have been working on onions clear back to the days of Fabian Garcia in the 1920s. He started many of the programs with chili peppers, pecans, onions, paprika, a lot of stuff like that. There are many competitors, and the onions are constantly being evaluated in adjustments made for the best of the consumers and the commercial operations. And uh, the Fresh Chili Company have fresh Numex sweet onions for sale, but we're coming to the end of this season. Michael Swickard here with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico. What is coming with the Fresh Chili Company, uh, since they are harvesting a little early, there's a special reserve release of Hatch Green Chili Veritol Big Jim in a 16-ounce jar. Veritol means that this product, this chili, is only made with Big Jim chili. That's, uh, in 1975, Big Jim was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as having the largest chili pods, which were perfect for chili rellenos. They are still perfect for chili rellenos. It was developed by chili researcher Dr. Roy Nakayama at New Mexico State University, hybrid of New Mexico chili peppers and a Peruvian pepper that Nakayama and fellow researcher Jim Lytle combined. Big Jim is named for Jim Lytle, who died unexpectedly at that time. I talked about Dr. Roy Nakayama on last Wednesday's podcast, if you would like to find out more uh, about him. Now, one thing happens if you live in Las Cruces or happen to be in our little slice of paradise, you can come by the Fresh Chili Company's gift shop, 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite 7DA in Las Cruces. It's open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And there's some new products that you can see there. There's a local honey with Hatch Red Chili that is, I have to tell you, great on biscuits. French fries are ever so much better with the Fresh Chili Company's Hatchup. Now, Hatchup is regular ketchup with Hatch Red Chili. You can come and browse and find many surprises. There's uh, frozen uh, stuff. Uh, Monday through Saturday, Fresh Chili Company gift shop. It's at uh, 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7A in Las Cruces, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. This is Michael Swickard with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, brought to you by the Fresh Chili Company. Thank you for your time today. We'll always have lots of news and stories about New Mexico. If you have something or someone you would like me to talk about, Write to me, Michael at FreshChiliCo.com. That's Michael at FreshChiliCo.com. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, yes, and eat plenty of that good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili is good, more is better. Bye for now.